course, uh, yesterday we left the shelter of the of the sukkah, and now it seems like we are in a period of the sukkah David Hanufalet period of of destruction and 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 terrible sadness. And so, we learned today in honor and in memory of those who passed away, who were murdered, in the hope that those who are kidnapped come home safely. And for all of those people who are risking their lives, Chaylei Tzal and others who are on the front lines, we're up to the 35th chapter of the book of Yirmiyahu, which is a, um, a strange chapter, I would say, a little bit different. Hadavar Hasher Haya El Yirmiyahu Me'it Adonai Bimei Yehoyakim Ben Yosheu Melech Yehuda Lemor. So this is a message. We're going back now to the time of Yehoiakim. Last couple of chapters, we were towards the end. It's Sid Kiyahu, Nebuchadnezzar, and his troops were already around uh, at Babel. So now we're, we're, we're going back before that time to the time of Yehoiakim. Haloch el beit harechavim, v'dibarta otam, v'havi otam beit Adonai, elachat halishkot v'shkita otam yai. So Yermia is told to go to the house of the Rechavites. Now we're not told yet who the house of the uh, Rechavites, uh, who who are these people, and t- bring them to the Beit Hamikdash and, and give them wine. So Yermio says, I went and I got you know all the members of their house. Sounds like he got all the men. So I brought them into one of the chambers. Beit HaMikdash had a number of chambers. Today we might call them offices, changing rooms, right, uh, of different people who, uh, and for different groups at, uh, at the Beit HaMikdash, at the temple. And so he brought them to the chamber of Gedalia, which is next to the chamber of the officials. Okay. And so I set bowls full of wine and cups before the this family, the Rechavim, the Rechavites. And I said to them, drink some wine. Okay. What's going on? The Amru. And they replied, Lo nishte yayin, ki yonadav ben rechav avinu, tziva aleinu lemor lo tishtu yayin, atem uvnechem adola. And they said, we're not going to drink wine because our ancestor, yonadav ben rechav, that's why they're called the rechavites, yonadav ben rechav was somebody who um, who was in the book of, uh, of Milachim. We... Um, we met him, and he told us generations ago not to drink wine. Let's continue. Uvait lo tibnu, v'zera lo tizrau, v'cherem lo titau, v'lo yelachem, ki ba'ohalim teishvu kol yemechem, leman tichu yamim rabim al pnei adama asher atem garim shem. So not only did he tell them not to drink wine, he also told them not to build houses and not to, you know, sow fields and plant vineyards. Don't do these things. Don't make roots. Live in tents, temporary, so that you may live long upon the land where you are currently living. And we listened, we obeyed our ancestor, Yonadab ben Rechab. And everything that he commanded us. We're in verse 9. We didn't build houses. We didn't plant uh, we didn't plant vineyards. We didn't plant fields. We didn't plant fields. But rather, what did we do? We lived in tents. And um, we listened to everything that our ancestor Yonadav commanded us. So a very, very strange unusual chapter and seemingly what's going on here different ways of looking at it without the word being used in this chapter this is a looks like these people are nazirites nizirim in in certain ways they're not exactly the nazir of the torah they don't talk about having their hair grown long they don't talk about not going to the cemetery but the idea of drinking wine 
the idea of not building houses, right? This is his, this ancestor, Yonadav, said to them, you cannot live normal lives. We're not going to put down roots. In a sense, we're going to be almost like nomads. We're going to live right, living in tents. I'm not building a house. I'm living a tent. You need to, in a certain way, remove yourself from society. Society is corrupt. Things are not going right. And we, if you want to live in this land, you need to be remove yourself completely from what is going on in the country. That's seemingly what Yonah Dov said to them, which is a very... Um, you know, it's it's uh, interesting to think to think about, and you can think about different contexts. So it's sort of like the Nazir people are separated. Think of the most famous Nazir is, is Shimshon, who right Shimshon was fighting the Plishtim, but he was not the head of the army, as we pointed out all those uh, year ago or whatever it was. Shimshon wasn't the head of the army. Shimshon didn't have troops. He did everything on his own. He was a Nazir. He was separate. He was he was his own. He was his own army. These people are, you know, Nadav says to them, separate yourselves, go be tense, be like, in a sense, like the Essenes during the second temple period, society is corrupt. We want to stay in the land of Israel. We have to remove ourselves from the society. And that's what, okay, let's see what Yirmiyahu gets in, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so we're up to Basak Yud Aleph. This is the end of actually what they say. But when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invaded the country, he said, God, let's go to Jerusalem because the, right, the enemy army is here, the army of Chaldeans, the army of Aram. And so we are living now in Jerusalem. This is not what we want to do. This is not where we want to be. This is something that we have, something that we know all too well, right? The uh, the enemies of, of uh, B'nai Yisrael, of the Jewish people, don't care if you are Nizirim, if you are uh, separate from society, if you're if you're the commander in chief, they don't care about that. So now we're living in houses here. So let's see what Yermio's response is. So God says to Yermio, Ko hamara Adonai Tzvot Elohei Yisrael, Haloch v'amarta li'ish Yudal li'oshvei Yerushalayim, so God says, go and speak to the citizens, to the inhabitants of Yehuda, of Yerushalayim, and say, there should be a lesson that you should understand. Take Musar to listen, right? About listening to God's command. Listen to the descendants of Yonadav ben Rechab. They've listened to his command all of these years. He told them not to drink wine, and to this day, have they drunk wine? No. They listened to their ancestors. But I spoke and spoke every day. I got up early. I talked about this. I talked about that. I told you to listen to God, but you never listened to me. Excuse me. Kol and God continues, right? I said to Yeshaya, and I said to Amos, and I said to Micha, and I said to right, Habakkuk, and I said to all these, uh, and, and now I'm sending Yirmiyahu. And I said, everybody, it's time to mend your ways. It's time to repent so that you can stay in the land of Israel. But you didn't listen to me. The families of Yonadav, Ben Rechav, they listened. But you didn't listen to me. And therefore God says, Disaster is going to come to the people of Yehuda, to the people of Yerushalayim. I've threatened them. I spoke to them. Uh, they didn't listen. They didn't pay attention at all. But you, the Rechavites, who listened to your ancestor, Yonadav, and you kept what he told you to do, and what he he uh, what he requested from you, Lachen Kol Mar Adonai Tzvot Olei Yisrael, Lo Yikrei Ish Leonadab Ben Rechav Omed Lefanai Kol Hayamim. The descendants of Yonadab Ben Rechav 
they, they're not going to be expelled. They're not going to be killed. They're going to remain. And presumably, you know, it says that they listened to the commandments of their ancestor, but probably also they also listened to the uh, commandments of God as well. It doesn't say that here, but we imagine, I would imagine that it in some way is implied as well. It's mostly for the sense of the message that's being sent by Yermio for the rest of the people. And when we think about this, you know, it's a really, it's an interesting chapter, right? On the one hand, they're the ones who listen. That's obviously the example. You're listening, we're, they're listening to a man. You won't even listen to God, the God who took you out of Egypt, the God who provided you with this land, the God, et cetera, et cetera. We know we've heard all the speeches that Yermio has given, God who is all powerful. And, and they listen and you don't. There's something also just to think about when we think about people like the descendants of Yonadav, Yonadav ben Rechav, they remove themselves from society. They're not putting down roots. They're not moving society forward. They're, they're separating themselves. And right, if you want to make a difference in, in the world, you can't go and live alone in the desert. Um, maybe if you're a super genius, you go and live alone in the desert and you, I don't know, you invent, a, I don't know, whatever it might be, uh, you, you invent a lasting battery, a battery that lasts a million hours. There won't be any more uh, any more burning of fossil fuels. But the exception of that sort of thing, you're living in the desert. You're separating yourself. You're not trying to move society forward. So on the one hand, they listen to their ancestor, Yonadav, but they're not doing that in a sense which God really wants them to do. What God really wants us to do, the whole idea in the Tanakh is to build this just society. Like God has promised even, right, in the last uh, week's chapters uh, of Yirmiyahu, that there will be a Tzemach Tzedek, there will be a descendant of David, a righteous man who will come, and he will be, bring Stakau Mishpat, he'll bring uh, righteousness and justice to Israel. And that with that, things will be reversed, because that's what we're supposed to be doing, is building this society that is righteous, and that is just, and that is kind, and that is compassionate. And when you're living by yourself off in the desert, if it's, you know, six people or 12 people or 27 people or 34 people, you are you are not part of the society. So on the one hand, yes, they will continue to remain alive. And they represent sort of the nomadic state of the Jewish people. They're going back to the time in the sense of like Avraham. They're living in tents. And they're, they're, they're their own sort of little people. So they will continue because of their obedience, whereas opposed to the rest of you uh, won't. And that's only because everybody else is so horrific. But generally, their behavior, I think, is not a behavior. It's not a full-time behavior. We think of the Nazir in the Torah. Yes, there's Shimshon, who's the exception to all rules. The Nazir in the Torah generally it's for a short period. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, even a year. It's usually somebody, the rabbi's connected with the idea of somebody who was, uh, they see the sota, they see the drunkenness, and because of that, they want to separate themselves from society. It's, it's something that's supposed to help you, uh, just like the Maimonides says, the Rambam says, you should be on the middle path. So if you're too stingy, you need to be too generous for a time in order to balance it out. And that's, that's in a sense what the idea of the Nazir is. It's not something for all time, because it's something to separate yourself from society. Everybody goes to funerals to show comfort, to show, you know, uh, to show comfort to a family. You don't do that because you're not part of society. You're not going to drink wine, which is social. You're going to let your hair grow because you don't care about what everybody says, what everybody thinks. Think of Eliyahu with his hair and his clothing and his whatever. Nobody, you know, he was he, he was so far out of society, and that's part of what his clothing and his appearance showed everybody. That's good for a time period. It's not good for a life. It's not good for a community. It's good in the time of horrors of the time of Yirmiyahu, but it's not the way ultimately of moving society, of moving the Jewish people's mission forward. Um, and that's uh, you know a message not just for this chapter, but for all time.